My name is Michel Jacobs. I'm responsible within IGDB uh, from a new market strategy, which is really cloud-oriented and what do we do with payments? How do we make payments and corporate banking business aware and do that in a more efficient deployment? So what is actually a real-time payment? So real-time payments is fundamentally driven really by the industry. It was driven starting in 2007 in the UK by the desire to get rid of the floating checks. It is to support the corporate manufacturing supply chain, which basically by nature of just-in-time is already real-time to begin with. And so now partially driven by market requirements, partially driven by regulatory requirements. So now you see everybody starts deploying real-time payment, which is the ability to make authorization and funding availability within five seconds to five minutes, depending on the country. What's really the key now is, what does that really mean for a bank? What does it mean for the corporate? How can it drive economic benefits? How can it make operational benefits? And of course, the business and the strategic benefits. So we see now a lot of the banks starting to ask that very same question. So what can I actually do with the real-time payments? And how can it really support my goals with the corporates? So, and what actually are the risks you are facing in order to imply real-time payments? So it starts fundamentally, it's, it's our job as fintech and our job as IT providers to enable a corporate bank to become truly an integral part of the corporate sort of manufacturer supply chain. Mm -hmm. In a similar way that the goal with retail banks is to become an integral part of the consumer lifestyle. Mm -hmm. right? So that means first and foremost you have to understand what does real time really mean and what's the impact. So it's not just about the execution of payments. It also has an impact on the regulatory aspect. How do you adhere to Basel III? How do you adhere to the LCR ratio managing the net inflow and the outflows? Not just from one but across all of the banks. So when a lot of payment channels are converging within the realm of real-time payments and the associated technology, that becomes even more and more important. You have to be able to manage all of that holistically. The second time is you have to support Real-time means immediate gratification. Look at where our young consumers are going, the millennia. They expect right now, right here, any channel, any time. Same as for corporates. Corporates no longer accept that it takes two days before a payment hits the business partner. So they want to understand, okay, I understand you now have payments, but what does that mean for supply chain? And how do I support new digital? How can you make my experience better? So real-time has a much broader implication. And then last but not least, Banks have settled with a lot of technology debt, so they have legacy platforms in the back that might be batch based. So that's per definition an issue, right? And so what your banks are looking for is how do I establish a real-time 24-7 production environment for my banking, for my payments environment? How do I then do holistic payment decisioning? How do I ensure that I can do limit management so I control and manage my risk? So when you look at real time, you step a little bit back. It starts first and foremost is how do you manage the interaction with the customers, with the corporates, whether that's a device, whether that's a channel, whether that's a file. So that's what we call contextual banking, to make banking and payments, if you will, business aware. If you understand what is going on, but more importantly, why is this action happening? Why is the interaction happening? It allows us to enable the bank to optimize and maximize the execution. Right? So when you look at the broader aspect, it means about how do you focus on the interaction? How do you ensure you manage the regulatory compliance? How do you look at payments truly holistically? And how do you drive true tangible business benefit out of it? That combination is really what the corporates and what the banks are looking for from what real-time payments should mean. And that is not just the technology debate about ISO 20002 or standards. That's just the underlying enablement layer. So is it easier to actually uh, in, uh, implement real-time payment in already established uh, countries with established banking system? Or is it easier to actually enter a developing third world country um, and um, you know, implement real-time payment transactions uh, pain-free, you know, time waiting free uh, there? So if you go back in 2007, Faster Payment UK was a mandated environment. So the question you're asking is very much, you know, what is the regulatory climate? 
right? So UK was driven by a consumer backlash about the floating checks, right? Singapore G3 was driven really by the desire and the government to be ahead and make sure that the business flow was easier to support the Singapore status. You now have it in Thailand, you have it in all other countries going around the world. So the question is A, the drive of real-time payments will be driven partially by market drivers, but predominantly supported by regulatory drivers. And then the second question behind that comes, so what does that really mean in how each and every one of those banks have the ability to actually start reaping the benefits? How can they leverage real-time payments to provide better reconciliation, better payable solution, better supply chain solution? Because in the end, it's a long project. As I said earlier, it's definitely not pain free. Yeah. And so banks and corporates are then saying, okay, right, now tell me what I can do with this so it actually drives value for me. And that's where everything should be focusing on right now. And right now we're still in the phase of deploying real-time payments. So we have a lot of engagements with customers that say, what does it really mean from your cloud strategy? Right? How can I use virtual account strategy? How can I do receivables, payables, fractional supply chain to support the manufacturing supply chain? And how can I do that in a project of a year, not another five-year project? We're running out of time. We have to ensure that we can drive shorter term value, better ROI, and our technology, our cloud enablement is one piece of the puzzle to deliver that to the banks. Where, where do you face more obstacles in order to implement? Uh, how eager are the banks to actually introduce this, um, you know, uh, this software from IGTV which guarantees? Sure. It's a very good question. So we see a lot of alignment between the bank's desires and the regulatory entity and the developing economies. Like in India with UPI, we see it in the Far East with what's going on in Thailand right now with PromPay and the extension on ITMX. We saw it in Singapore with G3. We've seen it with the drivers in all of Europe with SEPA and now with PSD2. Right? All of that is strongly driven by a desire of the market and we see it. The more complex countries are the most mature economies like the US. Right? There, there is multiple and initiatives like the clearinghouse, early warning system. So there's multiple initiatives on different type of real-time payment technologies. And there is a lack by the regulatory body to mandate it out, right? And so mandating is not always pleasant, but it does help because it just, it's just like ripping the band-aid off at one time. It was mandated in the UK. It was forced to be done, same in Singapore but it got done and now everybody can build up on it. So the most complex one is where there is a disconnect to what the banks and corporates want and what the regulatory environment is. So I think the clearinghouse and early warning system, they both have the right approach and they both are trying to do the right thing. Um, it's unfortunately that the governing body in the US is not stepping up and say, let's just mend that out. So I really hope that we get there fast. It's the right initiative to do for the industry. It's the right initiative to support what the economy is looking for. Uh, our future of commerce is global. It's no longer bound by borders or time or any device or channel. And so we have to ensure that we as the financial industry can not only enable that but drive and support that. Um, and there is a topic I want to ask about funds control. Mm -hmm. So how do you um, help companies to control their funds and what, what is your approach to that? Sure. So funds control is, is an integral part of overall global commerce and what that really means for real-time payments. So, so fundamentally what it really means is when you look at where real-time payments, it's kind of converging two worlds. There is a traditional consumer side world, which is more the card-based payment world. And then there is a traditional corporate side, which is more the ACHs and the wires, the history of SWIFT, if you will, the world. So real-time payment is converging all of that together. And what that means is suddenly you have an enormous amount of combined entities, combined payments, and combined use cases come together. They could be from consumer to consumer, all the way to business to business. That brings a level of economic shifts. So the reason, for example, or I would say definitely one of the reasons for MasterCard to acquire Vocalink is because there is an 
recognized importance and the recognition of certain car traffic will move to the world of real-time payments, right, in the C2C, C2B scenarios. So when you see those two come together, you have to establish in the beginning, so how do I then manage them? Because they're by definition almost incompatible, right? So on one side, they're very high margin, but very low volume. And on the other side, they're very high volume, but very low margin. So how do I move that in one world and ensure I can support quality, reliability, but also economics and efficiency? And so one part of that is, how do I then manage payments authentication? When I, somebody comes in with a request, how do I say yay or nay? How do I do that? And you have to manage, which is the notion of funds control, you have to manage that holistically across all channels, understanding complex hierarchical account structures as well as simple. So you have to say a holistic payment decisioning yay or nay. And on top of that, you have to enable the entities to put limit management on place. So if somebody has accidentally starting to send out a significant amount of wires, think about the hacking syndrome, how do you then automatically manage? It's not necessarily just yet another fraud control, you just manage that from a risk management perspective. You, you have the ability to apply limits on a bank, an entity, or a group. So funds control becomes a fundamental supporting entity to support truly the deployment of real-time payments and to make it a success.